Well, hello, Facebookers, YouTubers, and all other onlookers. I think I reversed that, but that's okay. Jimmy P. Brown coming at you uh, from my home here in Troy. Um, well, I'm just wrapping up a Saturday. I had a great all-day session with uh, artist Corey and Kelly from Panama City Beach, Florida. They came up and uh, we did some recording. Uh, just working on completing their 10-song debut LP, which will be coming out uh, this December. So we're really excited about it. And I uh, just felt like saying, hey, I tried to do Facebook Live, but for some reason it kept saying my internet signal was bad. And it's not, but oh well, maybe a bunch of people are using it. Anyways, it's been a long day. But uh, I've had a lot of lot of questions, and the emails have just been pouring in, and uh, to not only my Gmail account but my iCloud account, and to uh, the new Eraserhead uh, email address, um, and as well as just Facebook Messenger blowing up, and uh, you know I woke up to it was a, a really nice uh, probably what you know thirty three or thirty four emails I think it said and. And uh, by the end of the session tonight, when I got out of uh, the session with Corey and Kelly, uh, I looked at it and it was 110, so I was like, dear Lord. So, just a lot there. Um, but, you know, it's funny, a, a, a couple of things I, I wanted to go over. Um, first of all, I'm glad uh, those that uh, received the, um, the Ego track, the, uh, the first preview of the Eraserhead material, uh, I'm so glad that you guys liked it. Uh, you know, I, I sent out uh, over 200 emails and then and, count, and and a ton of other ones through Messenger on Facebook. I went ahead and I just hooked up probably another 20 or 30 people. Um, but please respond. Um, uh, don't just send uh, like personal responses on Messenger. Try to post if possible and help us promote uh, the Eraserhead project because we're really, really, really excited about it. And uh, we want to see uh, some good stuff happen with that. And we're, more importantly, just excited to present it to you. So, um, what else? Uh, I just, so I just wanted to thank you. It's, uh, I haven't heard, read one negative review. It, it's, uh, people are just loving it uh, and say they can't wait to hear more. Um, so that that's that's always exciting. Uh, you know, when, you know, as an artist, even though, you know, we have a, a steady fan base, you know, it's still always very nerve wracking and scary to put out something new because you just never know what people are going to do. And, 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 uh, you know, so I'm, I'm glad people are digging it just like with the new deliverance record and, and, uh, I'm really, really excited about Camelot and that's a, that's another subject I wanted to talk about. And I mean, the, the, the campaign's got another four hours to go. And uh, we're so happy. We're so excited about that. Um, uh, it, it's okay that it that it it's at, you know we we're almost at thirty percent, which is incredible uh, amidst all the catastrophes that have happened, and then being told that a redo doesn't uh, happen. And and you know I've got a, I got a lot of emails today too that actually talked about it and said the reason they didn't do it is because we've taken so long with the. Uh, initial deliverance record. Well, you know, we, and, and I understand, you know, and, and a lot of people don't keep in contact with uh, and read all the posts and watch all my videos on my blog. So they don't know everything that's gone into it that uh, and, and why it's taken so long. Um, so it's just, it is what it is, and I understand. But, you know, either way, we're going to start it and move in faith and know that it's going to get completed. So we're pretty stoked about it. Um, so I'm trying to stay busy, love to stay busy when it comes to music. It's, uh, nothing worse than being stagnant. So I'm always trying to move in different directions. Um, so thank you, all you awesome backers. Uh, and like I said, participants in the Camelot project, you guys are just amazing to me. And, uh, let's see, what else, what else do I want to comment on? Oh, I, I do want to say that, um, I'm pretty stoked um, 
that's uh, again the the response for the the eraser head but it sparked a lot i mean i was actually surprised i i i read the first one and then and then the first one was followed by several and then you know ended up like over 10 or 15 and i've had tons of actually emails over the past couple of years that have asked me this and and have been asked when i meet fans in pers people you know in person and people ask this so i thought i'd talk a little about it and and you know because the the biggest question is what was it like uh to work with uh, Terry Scott Taylor. And for those of you who don't don't know what I've said before, I'll say I'll say it again, you know. Um, you know, working with Terry Scott Taylor was for me the on the equivalency level of working with Brian Eno or working with David Bowie uh, or Peter Gabriel. It, it was that it meant that much to me uh, as an artist to to work with a hero. Um, Terry was, uh, I, I'd been listening to him since, you know, early on, since I was nine, ten years old. And, um, so to, to actually get to work with him, um, at, at, you know, at his, at his, you know, he had his hand at the helm of production, uh, for Stay and Learn. And that was just an amazing time. And then for River Disturbance, I was, I, you know, I guess at that point I just learned so much from him. And, and I was shocked and I was surprised that he actually gave me, that he was so kind enough to give me a production credit on River Disturbance. And, um, but what was it like? Well, I mean, what's it like to work with a genius? Well, you know, because it, 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 it's, it's an experience. Um, He's just, you know, he's extremely professional, knows what he's looking for, knows what he's doing, and is extremely experimental and has just great ideas and would just shoot them out when they were needed. And, and, and he's just, it was just absolutely the consummate producer you know, the, everything that I thought working with a producer was like. Um, I'd only worked with, you know, Bill Matoyer uh, at that point in my career, and, and of course, John and, Dilo, John and Dino Elefante, um, which, you know, again, professional, fantastic, wonderful. But I, I wanted more of that interaction of creativity like with what I imagine working with Bowie or Eno or Peter Gabriel, cats like that, you know, and, and, and that's, that's what working with Terry gave me. It's awesome, awesome experience. One that I will cherish forever. Um, he's just, he's just one of those, he, you know, he's a character in his own right. Fantastic sense of humor. And, uh, you know, we got lost for hours and hours and hours of conversation during studio time. Um, just, it, it, and, and even after the studio time, after studio time was over, we would just sit and talk for hours. Because um, he's just a brilliant man, and, and, and more importantly, it was an honor that he called me a friend. And um, what, a few of these questions that they actually asked, you know, how, how did it come about, you know, um, doing horrendous disc in Sanctuary, and even William Blake on um, for my Fearful Symmetry project. Um, well, the way it happened was exactly the the, the way I'd, I'd always wanted to cover those songs. Um, primarily horrendous and um, uh, Sanctuary. Now, when we when I first approached him, you know, I was a little timid about it. You know, uh, you know. He, now Terry never pushed any of his ideas; he only suggested. He never uh, pushed his own songs. He n never even brought that up. Uh, if he would help with a lyric, or if he helped with a chord change, um, he, he never wanted credit for that. It, 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 you know, it's like he said, "I'm just the producer. That's my job. That's I'm here to make things better." You know, he didn't say, you know, hey, I, I changed that D to a G, so I want songwriting credit on this. He, he didn't work like that. It's like he said, I don't own that chord, so, you know, why in the world am I going to bug you for songwriting credit? I mean, he's just one of those cats, you know. He's just, you know, very humble, very amazing, just just not even aware of his own genius. And, and it was just such an honor to work with him. 
And um, so when it came time to ask about horrendous disc, you know, and I begged, you know, can, can we get some of the guys in here? And so he, he brought Jerry Chamberlain in, and that was just like mind blowing. And, uh, and uh, you know, he came and did backup vocals, and, and then, you know, we just, and Rob Watson played on the piano. And it was just like, wow, this is so cool, you know? So, it, you know, we just had a lot of fun doing it, and it was it, more to honor Terry. Now, Terry, the funny thing is, was when we first got together, you know, he, he, he thought I was uh, kind of a phony fan and uh, that I just kind of like quick studied all his material and, and, and I knew how to talk to him about his music. But uh, what really convinced him was when I brought him a video of, of me in 1983 singing at my church uh, two of his songs. Um, Losers and Winners and uh, Jesus is Jehovah to Me, which is off of the uh, uh, the first album, the first DA album, 1974, man. Uh, he was blown away. He was like, oh, my God, you really are a fan. I'm like, yeah, I told you, man. Uh, you know, he thought I used to just say that stuff to make him feel old, you know. But, uh, you, know, that, uh, you know, I'd been a fan since I was nine or ten. And um, I mean, I remember going to see them for the first time, you know, and, and I was expecting the country version of, uh, of uh, you know, or the Shotgun Angel DA version of, of DA, you know, Daniel Amos. And, and what I got was, you know, the horrendous disc, the horrendous disc guy. And because uh, it was right during that tour in 1979, 1980. So it was, it was and, and man, I just fell in love with I Love You number 19 and, and um, uh, Sky King and, and just all these amazing songs. And, and, uh, so Terry was just always, always such a big, big, big influence. And I and I remember when the Alarma Chronicles came out, you know, starting with the first, Alarma was just, it, it blew my mind. I mean, it blew my mind. I was just like, my God, it, it doesn't get any better than this. And then, uh, then Doppelganger followed. And then and I was like, well, my gosh, this is even better. And in, in some ways it was a little weirder, but it, it, was, it was getting better. And then when Vox Humana hit, that was it. I mean, that was, man, that just, that sold me over the edge. And then, of course, the, the finalization of the, of the uh, four song um, story saga of, of um, uh, the Alarma Chronicles, which was Fearful Symmetry. And uh, another brilliant record. And any, anything Terry's done has just always had a stroke of genius to it. And um, so it was very intimidating working with him on it. Um, but I think we paid great homage and, and tribute to it. But when we came to the Learn album, I wanted to do another DA song. And he was really, really embarrassed. He was just like, you know, and, you know I was like, I, you know, it's going to look like I'm forcing my music on you. And I'm like, no, I mean... I love cover songs, always have done cover songs, so no, it, it's it's not going to be, you know, uh, people know that you're not forcing your music on me, or at least at least I thought so, but I'm letting everybody know now, I'm setting the record straight, I, I, he never forced anything on me, never even suggested it, uh, I just love doing cover songs, and, I, and, and songs that I love, and... Uh, so when we did Sanctuary, though, I asked for liberty. I asked for complete and total liberty to do that song um, and, and do it my way. And, and in fact, when I went in to do the vocal for Sanctuary, I, I, I was tired from the day. I had sang all day for like 10 hours. And, and I just said, you know, let me lay a scratch vocal. And because uh, I was feeling raspy, I was feeling tired. And... Um, so, and we'll lay a scratch vocal and it'll be a precursor to work tomorrow. And when I went in there and I was doing those, ah, I was just doing those to kind of warm my voice up. And I did the song in one take. And I mean, Terry and Gene were in the control booth and, you know, at the end of it, they just looked at me and they go, that was the take. That's the song. This isn't a scratch vocal. This is the take. And I go, oh, no, no, not a, not a chance. And I came in and I listened to it. And I was just like, oh, God, yeah, yeah, really. It is. The, there's so much emotion here. And uh, I went in and did a couple of doubles of some parts. And 
and uh, we just left it be. It was just it was one of those magical moments. And so Sanctuary is just, to me, and it's always been our deliverance closer for the shows since 1993, um, because it's just such a great, powerful, powerful song. Much different from the original. Um, but that was the whole idea, is to completely deliveritize it. And, um, and I, you know, my greatest joy was when uh, he invited, he didn't tell me, it was during the mix, and he invited all of Daniel Amos. The, I mean, the, all of them, man. Greg Flesh, Jerry Chamberlain, Ed McTaggart, uh, you know, uh, Tim, Tim uh, uh, gosh, I always forget Tim's name, <laughs> but Tim the bass player. <laughs> um, you know, he, he got them all in, and they were all there, and he wanted them to hear it. And uh, I was so nervous, and I sat there in the corner, and they were all sitting around. And at the end of the playback, these guys had tears in their eyes. I mean, the first thing, actually, right when it started, is Ed McTaggart said, this is too slow. The sanctuary's not this slow. And um, I was like, oh, God, here it goes. But they just went on and on and on, you know? about how much they loved it. I mean, every one of the guys. And then, but the greatest compliment for me was when I looked over at, at, at Terry, who was sitting in, in the producer's chair, and he just looked at me, and he smiled, and he nodded at me. And that was the greatest compliment to me in the world, because he let me do that my way. And uh, it was very, very comforting and very cool. So what was it like to work with Terry Taylor? It was a magical time, a time of, uh, that I'll always cherish and I'll always remember. Because, uh, you know, he's Terry Scott Taylor. He means the world to me. And I've, trust me, I've covered a lot more than just those three songs. Uh, you know, Fearful Symmetry, we have you know, a cover of William Blake um, and, um, and Alarma. Um, but that's not released. And then, uh, Jupiter six, I did a, a cover of central theme and again, non-released. Um, and then I did, um, I actually tinkered with doing the entire Alarma album, um, under, uh, under my J JPB, JPB two solo record, which has now kind of become the eraser head project. Um, and I'm still tinkering with it I, uh, to, to, to redo Alarma, start to finish, do the whole thing. So that might be kind of cool. It might happen one day. We'll have to see. But uh, now Terry's just a uh, Terry. It, it, for me, I think my musical influences are always going to, you know, say as far as my artistic heroes is, is going to be Bowie, you know, Terry Taylor, Brian Eno, Peter Gabriel, you know, uh, the, those are like the the artistic, just mass artistic influences to me. And uh, to be able to actually get to work with one of these four geniuses that I just held really, really high and to and develop a more, more than anything, to develop a friendship with Terry, um, those are moments that I can't even express, that money can't buy, that nothing can buy. Um, and, I, and I'll, I'll always cherish my time with Terry Taylor. And, and I think one of the saddest and one of the most complimentary moments of my time with Terry Taylor was when I, uh, we, we, we had a ritual. We would go to the beach and I would come with my demos of showing him my material for the upcoming record. It started with Stay and then Learn and then River Disturbance. And then I brought him the Camelot demos I brought him Not Too Good For Me, Somber Theme, and Lindsay. And he sat and he listened to these 16-track demos that I did. And Because uh, at that time I had a 16-track studio in my house. And he just, he looked at me after listening to him and go, these are fantastic, this is great. And he goes, Jimmy, I think you're ready to fly solo. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you're, you've become a producer. 
And I'm like, no, no, I need you, man. I, I need you to do these. Like, no, no. He goes, it's it's time for you to do this and do this on your own. And I just didn't want to accept it. Didn't want to, you know, I was like, no, no, no. You, I, I need you. I can't do this. I don't want to be a producer, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, like I predicted, uh, you know, Camelot came in short, but for many other reasons why we're going to fix it. Um, but, man, when that happened, um, like I said, it was one of the most honored moments of my career and my life uh, that I had showed the maturity and the, the, that I had the ear to produce. But more importantly... Um, it was bittersweet because now my relationship with Terry is uh, going to move from producer, mentor to now my friend. Just friend. So, I don't know. Uh, so it was a cool time, but it was a sad time. And uh, to this day, you know, I love Terry and value every treasured second that I sent with, spent with him. And I learned so much from him. And I still try to emulate everything he's taught me uh, to this day. Him and Gene Eugene, rest in peace. I mean, gosh, they, I learned so much from that team. Uh, from engineering, from production, from hearing things. Yeah, those guys are amazing. And uh, I miss them both a lot and uh, of course Terry's in Cali still and uh, we keep in touch here and there on Facebook when we can but uh, but no that was the, the, a bulk of questions came in about Terry and the cover DA covers and and what it was like to work with such a genius well, that's what it was like for me it, they were moments that seemed like angels were coordinating and other heavenly beings were coordinating the sessions. Unlike any other studio experiences I'd ever had, they were fantastic. So, all right, man. Well, I'm going to wrap this up, but uh, those are my women's. Uh, women's? Is that even a word? <laughs> those are my thoughts about working with Terry Taylor. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, version of my video blog. So, Jimmy Brown signing off from Troy, Alabama. I think I'm going to have a cookie and uh, get some sleep. It's been a long day. Long week, actually. And uh, I'm going to go relax. Go hang out with the fam. So, peace out. Have a good night. Saturday night. And again, for all you crowd funders for the Camelot, it's coming, baby. And you guys are going to love it. I promise you. Uh, we didn't get there all the way, but it doesn't matter. We're moving forward and we're going to start and start the recording process as soon as we get all the guys together and make it happen. And we'll be announcing who's going to be appearing on this record very, very soon. So talk to you guys soon. And uh, as always, thanks for listening. And um, what you do have from Eraserhead, Deliverance, Jupiter 6, Fearful Symmetry, listen at maximum volume.